Um, so in a, generally speaking, your, your Varroa mite, it's parasite. And parasite by definition means I need a host. If I don't have a host, we don't live. That's how a parasite works. So we've got our mite and our honeybee is the host. Well, everyone goes down to the local watering hole. Your bees, your bees, your bees, and your bees. And a mite's gonna say, wow, a new host, and hop on. And then you're gonna go back to your hive over there. And what happens is, in order for mites to survive, they've gotten very good at masking their pheromone as they're coming into the hive. So very often they come in undetected. A hive only needs one mite to come in. And don't panic, everyone's gonna have mites, okay? But one hive, one mite goes in, and a mite that goes in is a female. She's already been mated. And there is a pheromone that the queen releases and that that hive releases right before an area of brood is about to get capped. And the way I picture it is, remember the cartoons where someone's running and the garage door's closing and they slide right under it and the door closes? Well, that's what the mites do. So they're gonna hang on the host, hang on the host, and then they're gonna drop off into the cell right before that cell gets capped. Now they're in. So they make their way to the bottom of the hive and that female is gonna lay a couple of eggs. She's gonna lay a male, one, and then six or seven females. And then they're gonna have a, like an incestuous relationship. That male is gonna mate all seven, six or seven females and they're gonna feast on that brood that is developing. At that 21st day, that brood is gonna hatch out, either very messed up with different diseases or severely compromised in their health or development. But let's say that brood gets hatched out and at some point, if it doesn't, the bees are taking it out, taking it out anyway one mite came in, six, seven come out, but they're already, they've already infiltrated. So now they get onto six or seven bees within that hive. They're all mated from the male that was in the cell. And then they six drop into 36 come out. So that's how that happens. So the reason that we're gonna check for our mites now in the summertime, early summer, is because our colony, we still have the ability to knock down any mite counts. We still have long enough in the year for that colony to rebound. If we're looking to test for mites and we're trying to do it in September, we're gonna miss that whole window, okay? Because remember, there is not a lot happening in the summer. So that's not, we don't really want our hive to go into like crisis over there. So we're gonna check our right. hive and we're gonna check our mite count with a mite shaker. This is not a lot of money. This is one of the most important tools that you'll have. For anyone that hasn't seen it, it's got a sieve on the inside and two lines, which indicate 150 bees or 300 bees. The second line, the higher one is 300 bees. We're gonna go into our hive and we're gonna grab a frame from the brood nest. Don't grab a honey frame, okay? That's like those retirement calculators where we can make up all sorts of numbers and be like, oh, great, I'm in great shape, right? No, don't grab a honey frame. It's not gonna be accurate for you. Grab it right in the middle. 
and please, please, please make sure your queen is not on that frame, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna take that frame, we're gonna flip it and hold it by the end bar. And we're gonna take this cup and all we're gonna do is bring it right up and they're gonna fall right in here. After that, you've got your shaker cup. You're gonna put it in here. Put a little bit of rubbing alcohol on the bottom. It's gonna kill those bees. And that's okay. Because we have this idea sometimes in our head, like I don't wanna kill the, I don't wanna kill my bees. Well, I always try to put it, these things into like real life analogies, it's always was easier for me to understand. If I went to the doctor and he said, hey, that doesn't look normal, I'd like to do a biopsy. I'm gonna say, here, take the whole arm, <laughs> right? Let me know what's going on, right? I'm not gonna say, oh, I don't, no, 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 no. That's the same thing with a beehive. We can't look at them as individual bees. You gotta look at that hive as an organism, okay? So those 300 bees that you're gonna kill is gonna give you an accurate detection of how sick or healthy that colony is. So, we're gonna shake this real, real good. We're gonna pull this out with our cup of dead bees. And in here, we're gonna count the mites because the alcohol will separate the mite from the bee. Now, in a lot of books, or um, some of us have, are familiar with testing for mites through a sugar roll, don't do that here because there's humidity in the air. And what happens when there's humidity with powdered sugar and sh you're gonna clumpy and then what you're depending on is those bees properly cleaning and grooming for you to get a proper mite count. A sugar roll, it does not work here. It'll work, but it's not gonna be nearly as effective of giving you correct data and information, okay? And again, that goes to learning the things that are applicable to where, where we're keeping bees. Keep alcohol wash. So we've got 300 bees and I see four mites out of 300 bees. So I have just over one mite per 100 bees. That's pretty good. I really need to treat and think about treating and we're gonna treat regardless, but that's a good number. Our goal is zero, but one to under two, there's a threshold of how much we can manage. Now, if I have 12 mites, now I've got four for every hundred. Now that's, I treat yesterday. You shake it, you count, you got like 24. Your hive is in big problems. Now you're rolling eight mites for every hundred bees. If our bees. mite count is two or less, okay. we're gonna treat, but we've got options on the types because it's not a larger threshold. So what she asked was, if I have multiple hives, should I test every hive or one or two? That depends on how many hives so you have. Three hives. If you have three hives and you feel better, testing, test them, but all three are getting the same treatment regardless. We've got mites, we've got a couple options. You've got Formic Pro. Typically Formic Pro it's gonna to be too hot to use in Florida in the summertime. It's very important because 
a lot of people will say, oh, treat with formic acid, treat with formic acid. That's what this is. Formic acid is great. It's all natural. It's naturally found in honey. Um, it's a very aggressive treatment and it's the only treatment on the market which is gonna kill the mites, not only on the bee, but even in the capped cell. Formic is extremely effective. It's also extremely temperamental with temperatures. And you can't have it in your hive with daytime temperatures above 84. So our window for Formic in Florida is gonna be like December or January where you have those couple of weeks where it's like It's a great time if your bees are successful coming out of the winter, right? To hit them with Formic because it's gonna clean them up for two or three months. But don't use Formic in the summer. The reason I put it up here was for you guys to be aware. This is not, this works for a large uh, uh, regions in the summertime, not, not where we are. If you put this in your hive, the whole hive will be cooked. Got hop guard. Now, pre-warning, it's very messy. She's laughing because she knows. Right, Julie? <laughs> hop guard is messy. It's in a liquid, sits there strips that sit in a liquid to get saturated by the mixture, which is the hops. This is an all natural treatment that you can have in your hive with honey supers on. Uh, your strips are gonna go, they hang over the frame. So down one side, it hangs over on the other. You would put two strips for every 10 frames. So if you have 22 deeps, it would be four strips. If you're in one single, two strips. And in order for HopGuard to be really effective, you've got to treat with it once for two weeks and then treat it again for two weeks. The benefit with HopGuard is it's not temperature dependent. Down here, it's a good option something to think about that you need to keep in your tool chest because you want to know what are my treatment options where you know I don't have to worry about the weather as much. We've also got Apigard. Apigard is a thymol based treatment and it works very much the same way like Formic does as a fumigant but Apigard is more popular in the Southeast because you have, you can use it in daytime temperatures up to 95 degrees. So you get an extra 10 degrees of play. So you can use Apigard in May sometimes, right? You can use it throughout the spring. And if you check, and because it's used quickly, you can maybe get some times where you could even pull it off in the summertime a little bit as well. So that's an option. The most effective to date is Apivar. Apivar is what we would consider a harder treatment because it's a chemical. And the chemical ingredient in Apivar is Amitrez. Amitrez is the same ingredient that they put on a flea collar for a dog. So, you know, when we put our flea collar on our, our Labrador, nothing happens to the lab, but anytime fleas come on to the lab, they die because they come in contact with the amitrez from the collar. That's the same way Apivar works with mites. Apivar doesn't, the amitrez doesn't kill the mite, it paralyzes the mite. The mite can't feed, it can't reproduce, it dies. That's how Apivar works. Apivar is um, two strips for every 10 frames. So right here, um, this is a four pack. So essentially this would treat one double hive or two single hives. You always gotta do the math on strips. It, and it comes in different pack sizes. But um, the reason that this is really effective is 
there's no temperature and it stays in the hive six to seven weeks. Well, if a brood cycle is three weeks, 21 days on average, this is in the hive through two entire brood cycles. So all the mites that are on the bee are gonna get killed. As those brood, all that cat brood hatches out, those mites are gonna die. Any new brood that's getting laid, I mean, this covers a large amount of generations when it sits in the hive for six to seven weeks. Your, your fall brood, Typically, even though your queen, we don't have a traditional winter, she's still gonna slow down some in December or January. You're not gonna go like broodless, but she's gonna slow down a little bit. And so, you know, when your hive gets sick in the summer, it's, it's going to your hives, it's gonna affect your hive in the fall. It's gonna affect your hive in the winter. And it's going to affect all your other hives. Remember what I said, bees are social. Gotta get a mite shaker. I don't, if you wanna make it yourself, make it. But you gotta have a way to show your baseline for before and after.